Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I finally published 7.1.0 of Rocks this morning. This is the July 4th week where I'm recording this and probably some other episodes because I'm on vacation and what else would you want to do on vacation other than record some videos and do some programming, right? I mean, I've actually got plans to do other things. I'm going to be doing a bike ride, uh, the Great Scott County bike ride or some I forget the name of it but something like that actually let me just look that up here real quick okay that took much longer to find the site than I thought it would but this is the event that I'm doing tomorrow um, on July 4th unfortunately it looks like there might be some rain in the morning I I didn't get lucky last year with bike rides I got I'd only did two and both of them I got drenched and that just wasn't fun the one I did uh, a couple weeks ago, the Minnesota Ironman, whatever it was, it was a 36-mile ride starting and ending in Shakopee, and that was great. The weather was really nice. This one, hopefully the, the rain holds off. So we'll see. I'm doing just a 25-mile ride tomorrow, and then I'm thinking maybe on Thursday there's a trail. <clears throat> Actually, it's called Root, Root River Trail. It's south of... Rochester in Minnesota. I may be doing that, driving down there and, and trying that trail out. So I definitely got other things I want to do during my time off than just doing coding. But I did get this done and it was good because there were some tests I was doing when I do like pointer name generation or rough like type name generation that they weren't actually doing the right thing. And I was able to clean up a couple of things doing that, but all of it's done now, all of it's finished, and so there's a 7.1.0 version out there. And now I'm gonna look at a 7.1.1 branch or release where I'm gonna fix some of these bugs that have been sticking around for quite a long time and I've quite honestly just been lazy in not trying to address them because they are, I think most of these are just what I consider to be low priority, they're very, niche cases. They're not something that I think you'd run into a lot of times, but they are things that I should address. So the first one I decided to address was this one. So this one comes up with auto mapper and I basically put it down to this case. So there's actually a couple of issues that I want to address with nullability. So I'm going to make a nullability generator test and then I'll put this in and see if I can get it to happen if it, and if it does then I'll figure out how do I address this so let me get that set up okay so I got the file set up and got the branch made as well so let's now copy and paste some stuff I don't really know what to call this test right now I'm not really sure what exactly the the plan is to name it wow that was a lot of code that I'm gonna grab we're gonna have to change that probably a little bit so again we're going to play the game where we can just put in a empty string here and we're going to call this well i don't know we already have the code here so let's grab that okay and then we'll put that in here actually i think i did yeah i do have that there okay so i don't think there's anything else in here that we need to do so let's change this to i destination is the name going to be i destination of i don't remember do i have generic tests here eg i don't async i, I, I don't remember what the name of the file is going to be <laughs> so oh i do have nullable annotations but this is null i don't know whatever it's a vacation. Let's see what happens. My God, you think after I'd done this for so long that I would have, I, I, I would know what I'm doing and this wasn't working. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? It's because I forgot the using here. I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> so, okay. So it actually did generate some source. So let's open the test log because I think we've realized that this is a, Better way of doing it. Let's grab all this. Okay, and let's come back here. 
And let's do some raw string literals and put that there. And then we'll say change plus to that. That's great. And now I think this keeps that. Okay, so now I think this is generating all the right stuff, but I think what the problem is is that this is giving some warnings, if I remember right. So let's run this. Okay, it failed. Is it failing for the... Oh, the name is wrong. Okay, oh God. I, I beg of Visual Studio team to please change that. That is just... <laughs> Like, so frustrating how that moves so fast. Destination. Okay. Still failed. Yay. Do we get the thing that we want? Yeah. Null ability. Okay. So this is this is what we want. Let's just copy all this. Let's come over here. Close that. Do that. So what I really want to capture is this. Why did you suddenly run terminal? I did not ask you to run terminal. So I don't think I asked you to run terminal. Okay, so nullability and constraints for type parameter T of method rock I destination of object as doesn't match. Why are you putting all, like, why are you trying to assume that this is C sharp code for some reason? Stop it. Doesn't match the constraints for the parameter Inter interface method at destination of object as T. Consider using an explicit interface implementation instead. Okay, so if I'm here, if I'm feeling you right, let's just see what happens. If I do this and then I say public, wait, why are you barking here? <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> I don't care. Okay, so if I say public, class rock and that will derive from my destination of object because that's what we want now you need to implement it right so if we implement it that's okay but it gives us this okay maybe I've done this before this gives us the same error so consider using an explicit interface implementation instead how about no? <laughs> How about no? I think if I have to say where T is T object, because that's what it is now. No, but still doesn't. You can't say that. Right. So you have to say T des destination. Now you don't know what T destination is here. Class <laughs> that constraint, yeah, it, it's funny because it doesn't, it doesn't tell you. See, wait a minute, that was nullability. Now, if I did this, yeah, that suddenly switches to a different value. I can't do this, that doesn't work. Like, it doesn't nullability and constraints for. Do you need to say like where T is nullable? I don't think that's a constraint thing. Yeah, what? I'm not really sure what to do with this. To the Sharp Labs, I wonder if they give a different thing. Okay, and so now, yeah, you don't implement it. So let's say implement it. And we're gonna get the same thing. Now, th this is also something I put in the notes, which is this is a warning, this is not an error. So let's actually, because we should have that here. No, 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 I know it's that, put that there. Okay, now what you should have is this. So let's take a look at that and let's see that you have no documentation for this at all. Oh, you do, I'm shocked, 8633. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> But you don't, you don't say anything about how to resolve it. All this does is when I click on it, it goes down here. I'm like, I. what could this possibly be? 
I have no clue because, wait a minute, let's mismatch and nullability declaration. Following code demonstrates this. The preceding, ex I know I'm just reading what's there, but I need to get this in my head. Preceding example shows a virtual method and base class under override with different nullability. The base class returns a non-nullable string, but the derived class returns a nullable string. Yeah, if the string and string are reversed, it would be allowed because the derived class is more restrictive. Similarly, parameter declarations should match parameters in the overriding method can allow null even when the base class doesn't. Other situations can generate these warnings. You may have a mismatch interface or delegate type type parameter. Different null value. Fix these warnings. Update the appropriate declaration. Yeah, I've got a word for you, and I'm not going to say it because it's a bad one. So nothing is helping here. <laughs> like if I say this is an and this has to be an object because I think that's how the error actually comes up. Because we've okay, let's think this through. We've said here that this is an object. So T has to derive from object, right? We can't put object in here. Yeah, that wouldn't work. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny because both of them give the wrong answer. Now, one thing that it was also saying was you can implement it explicitly like that, and then it works. So how would I detect that though? Like, I don't even know <laughs> how this comes up. I'm saying you have a method that has a parameter, a type parameter, where the type parameter is constrained to a class. Like this type parameter is on the method. This is constrained to the class. And now we have said this is a object. And so by doing this, this suddenly makes everything happy. But if I take this off and I suddenly say do it that, like the nullability and constraints for type parameter T doesn't match the constraints for type parameter T. Yeah, but what are the type constraints here? The nullability constraints where T not null? Now that makes it go away. So I got that going for me. <laughs> so this is one of those that I'm like, is this technically a case where it's saying it should not it should be not null? Like how in the world would you even come up with this to say that you, you need to do this in this case? Or I could say, <clears throat> make it an explicit implementation. Like if I can detect that, both, and I think that's what's hard about this. That's where I had in the notes is, I think if I come back up to here, I think that's why I say, I don't even know how to detect this. Maybe putting this pragma warning in for this case is just a better way to do it because I really have no clue as to how I'm gonna figure out that this warning is, is even arising. Yeah, this one's stumping me. I, I really don't know. If I put it into the gen code, then all my gen code is gonna suddenly break because I have to now suddenly put it in there and that's just, it, it's fine-ish, you know. I just wish this would somehow come back with to say that its constraints, the constraints that it has if I click here, oh, wonderful. Yeah, I love how it just, like it says, hold on, I'm gonna have to bring this up again because I changed the visibility of my screen settings while Visual Studio is running and, and usually it picks up those settings dynamically, but obviously here it has not. And this is just looking like a big dumpster file, dumpster fire. So hold on just one second. Okay, you can see here that now it's looking better. Really didn't help me out that much. And if you're just looking at the tokens, then yeah, it's not going to really help you to say with the constraints. It's just literally reading what's there. Is there a implicit that this is not null constraint? Like if you if you have this 
like, is that implicit? I don't know. So let's try. This would end up becoming a method model. And a method model, well, let's search for it. A method model would have constraints somewhere. Yeah. So let's see what this actually gives. I'm guessing it's probably just going to be the one. It's not going to come up with an implicit one or one that's kind of quote unquote hidden. Because if we can get it to be literally saying not null in that case, that would be, I think, the quote unquote right thing to do. You know, C sharp seems to be fine with that. No, we don't care about these. We resolve that. We know that that's all good. Okay, so if we step in to get constraints, these I think are just going to give us the constraints that are on it. It's not going to, like it should just give us like the type parameter here if we now step in to get constraints here. It's not going to have, yeah, it doesn't have, has not null constraint on it. So it's not going to pick that up. And these are just getting if it's a, yeah. So we get all that. Okay, and then we come through here and that's the only one. And what did we get? We got probably, well, that doesn't help. We didn't get any. Okay, why would that be? Because it thinks there aren't any. So this one now, Wait, these are the T. This is not the, yeah, but it should be. It doesn't have a reference. Hold on. Has not null constraint? No, it doesn't have that either. And has no nullable annotation. So we got that going for us. <laughs> so is there anything on here that it trips on? Yeah, there's no way to pick up from this that you need a not null. And there's no way to say either that as far as I can tell, that you need to make this explicit because of the code analysis rule that's being raised as a warning and we do as an error. And so maybe just the best thing to do is to say, you know what, <laughs> we can't really, it just bothers me. Like it really bothers me that I can't figure out with this kind of interface definition yeah, that's actually going to need this or that it needs to be explicit. Like, how would you know to implement this explicitly? I, I, I'd have no clue that that's what you want to do. And I, again, I am reading this going, excuse me. I'm, I'm reading this going, yeah, I get it. You can't, you know, where we're making where they used to be not null and now they're null. We can't do that. And if we don't put this here, it now says that it doesn't match the constraints for type parameter T of interface that. Yeah, of interface method, I, so, well, okay. So if I said public interface, I, destination. This is probably not really helping out at all. No, that's not what I wanted. And I say object. No, I don't want to do that. What I oh, and it's not going to say you need to implement them because and you still have the same problem because it's still saying yeah, the same thing. There, there's no difference of what I just did. So. I might sit around today and watch some videos and think about what's the right way to handle this. 
because off the top of my head, I really have no clue. I, I have no idea. And sitting here is not going to help. So, yeah. The, the best thing may be to just put in a, the thing to say, ignore that. You know, the, the thing, the, the suppression, you know, or, or just say, you know, I think it was in here. Yeah, nullable, disable this one or so, or whatever that rule was. Just, just don't even, don't even put anything in there. I guess one last thing to look at real quick is, is this at all possible? That this has been reported somewhere else. Well, that's just the thing. Well, I don't think that's really going to, oh, whatever. Which one are we looking for? Is that X632? 8633. Yeah, you gave me 8632. That doesn't really help. I might also post something in a group and just say, you know, how in the world would you find this? Yeah, this isn't really helping. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm just babbling right now. I'm, I'm going to have to do some more research and figure out what I think the best one is to do and then hopefully move on to fixing another one. So, it, you know, it, the next video I'll talk about what I did to address this. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.